and uh, for far from placing his teachings within the mainstream of Judaic belief to gain traction on the faithful, he completely inverted traditional Jewish doctrines. The inversion was quite literal, so what had been considered good was now overturned in favour of bad. Judaic morality, of course, consists of a sense of right and wrong familiar um, with the commandments and elsewhere. The Sabbatai now said, if killing and stealing and worshipping the devil was wrong before, we will now make these things right, or at least desirable to practice. The doubtful logic underpinning this idea is that by promoting his actions, we will somehow purge the world of sin and hasten the arrival of the end times, when we will return to a state of divine grace. And there is some kind of perverse logic there, but I have to say it does make some sense in you know biblical interpretation. Mm -hmm. But uh, if it's sometimes it's a mixture of natural progression of humanity, you know, certain evils, certain things in society become more distilled as time goes on, you know, the, the, the misuse of, of, of um, technology, for instance. And if it's a natural thing that has, has undertones and is following a pattern guided and shaped by projections from our elites, I, it's a bit of both, I would say, um, going hand in hand. So this is where I'll leave it for now. Well, uh, <clears throat> perhaps you could comment on my um, my supposition is that I fully accept that, that there are a lot of nutty people around and there are these groups and um, I'm sure that they like to claim more influence and authority than they actually have and so if you read really go by what they say you could come to the conclusion that they are truly in control uh, I'm, I suspect a lot of them are, are just like clubs you know, where these horrible people could just get together and meet. But so they form part of the network, so they're, they're very important. But at the root of it, um, I sort of feel that they're, they're, it's all about money. Uh, I've written elsewhere about the way we're controlled by parasites. The mm -hmm. people who, who actually run us, they're not capitalists. Capitalists are the good mm -hmm. guys, they're parasites who, mm -hmm. just take a, who just take out money and they can actually they've developed methods of wealth extraction where they take out them. And the only way they can maintain that position as parasitic wealth extractors is by being very hard in the way they control us. You know, they have to deny morality. They have to de deny good. And so it leads them down this path of what I would call in general Luciferianism which can also be, in its worst form, Satanism, it can be Sabbatian Frankism, uh, all, these, um, all these kind of groups you know, can play a part. But the, as I kind of think that what is essentially at the root of it all is that you've got these parasitic people who have accumulated you know, almost infinite money. I mean, they, like Bill Gates, what's he got, 100 billion? No one can earn a hundred billion. You can only get it by being but a the parasite. World toy. The world is his toy. He even wants to block out the sun. It's bizarre. It's what you can do with money, isn't it? Oh, yeah. You know? Well, that was a little passage in that. that he would block out the sun. I love that. Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> uh, for our own good, by the way. Yes. To help humanity. Yeah, so, of course. But, but, uh, but what do you think about that? Do you, well, the role of money, do you, you think that's I, think it's, I also think the bond of, of having committed evil crimes um, has has got a, a very strong bond, one for blackmailing, one for keeping people in line. So I think there's something connected to this. And e uh, evil will seek its opposite. It, it will, well, I mean, the, the power structure, you know, it's, it's just, oh. I do believe that, that, that it is guided by, you know, the, the, these forces, to be honest with you. I think I've come to that conclusion. And I've also come to the conclusion that the state is absolutely dead against anything being revealed about this, which makes me even more um, concerned about it, really. The state is against what? Anything being exposed about I think being exposed, yes. or worship or any of the leads followed. Yes. Well, the, 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 the thing is, it's a rabbit hole once you go down that and uh, all the, the paedophiles that, you know, which are there um in quite high places as we know some of them have been exposed but a lot of them haven't been um pedophilia is very much connected with satanism and i, I think that once 
they're afraid that once somebody lifts the lid on one aspect, it's, it's not just a can of worms, it's, you know, it's a, it's a government full of worms. And there's, there's just too much stuff to come out. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a lot of, so unfortunately, you know, the word evil was a word I never used to use. No. So I do use it. Yes. Because I think it's the only way you can use. Mm. Yeah. It's been saved uh, for a special time, a special purpose, the word. And I think it's appropriate much more now. Yeah. The time's already. Yeah. There's a lot of evil about. Definitely. Real, real, mm. true evil. Tangible for a lot of people now, which at least we know we're not alone in sensing it. Mm. Yes. Um, well, there's just one more um, review to do, which it comes down to me, which is really one of my pet subjects that I keep bringing up, which concerns the Scripples, who um, we may remember two years ago disappeared from the public view under more than weird circumstances. And um, I won't need to, to, to trace all the details. Uh, we all know that they were supposedly poisoned and they went to hospital. Um, and they seem, after that, we really don't know what happened to them. We don't know if they're together or, or what happened to them. Now, this is a very, very peculiar situation in England because we are supposed to have a law which is called habeas corpus, give us the body not just the thoughts, the ideas. We want the person in front of us. Now, um, we don't have the body. When I say the body, obviously the living body, we hope. There's some doubt about that, honestly. Um, but we would, we need, uh, is a, everyone should have a right to say, well, where is this person? We know in this case that they haven't been kidnapped by private people. We know that they're in, under the custody of the state. So where are they? Now I ask the question, why doesn't the Russian government do something about this? Because they could employ a British lawyer and use British law to, to find uh, two citizens of their country. Apparently they can't do it because it so happens that they've been kicked out of the European Court of Human Rights, which let us remind ourselves, it's not part of the European um, Union. Um, it was set up uh, largely before that. It's quite, it's quite separate. And Russia was a signatory and was a good uh, member. They, they had cases um, which went against them and they followed the rules. But now, under the, uh, a, a trumped up charge, that they haven't been good boys and followed the rules. They were kicked out of the European Court of Human Rights. Well, that's very convenient because that means they are unable to um, use a British solicitor or barrister to investigate this case. So there's that avenue is closed down. Um, now, the press in this country, what are they doing about it? Well, of course, we know what the press is like in this country. They're doing absolutely nothing, which is why it's so important for an independent alternative newspaper like Chronicle of the Times to highlight this story. And we will highlight the story. We will not let it go because we don't know where these people are. Um, now, that is the main issue at the moment, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, the actual details of the... Uh, crime that was committed against them, I do not believe at all. The two people from Russia who were, they, they said were the culprits, who were found by um, Bellingcat, Bellingcat of all people who are, which is a NATO funded organization. They managed to find them in Russia, whereas MI6 uh, were unable to do so. And so that was a coup for Bellingcat, but of course they were directed there. And they did actually find these two people that were filmed on, Brit on the uh, video cameras in Britain. Um, but of course, there's no evidence that they uh, did, were, were involved in the poisonings, if poisonings is what was involved. Um, absolutely none. 
in my view, and this is just my view as a kind of cold reading, and when I say a cold reading, I mean you look at the facts and you draw conclusions that are consistent with all the facts, not just some of them, and make sense even though it might attribute very evil and wrong motive to certain people. I am pretty certain that in this case, the um, attempted poisoning of the scribbles was a botched MI5 false flag operation. They wanted at that time, and we're still in this period, but particularly at that time, they wanted to get something on the Russians. They wanted to distance Russia from Britain and hype up the warmongering against Russia. And so what better than to have the Russian secret uh, services uh, execute some extra murders on British soil. And the, British, the MI5 were given the job of doing that, or probably gave themselves the job of doing it. And the result was uh, they botched it. They didn't handle the poison properly. And um, unfortunately, the uh, National Health Service hospital that the people were taken to weren't uh, properly briefed. The idea was that these people should die, but the National Health Service didn't realize that and, and did their best to bring them back, to, bring, uh, to enable them to survive, which they did. Um, and so it is absolutely certain that Prime Minister Theresa May was in on the scam, was in on, on the, the scam. Um, you can tell that from her announcement to the House of Commons, the House of Commons. She was just brief and she stayed on message on the believing that they would, if they weren't dead at that moment, they would be dead shortly. But unfortunately uh, for her, they survived. So what you've got is a situation where if the truth came out, the damage that would be done to the, U the US, UK government and to the MI5 and the police and the press would just be colossal. So they have to keep the lid on it. And the best way to do that is to make these people disappear. And I think that's what's happened. Uh, they may be dead, but we've got no evidence. And no. We, why, why, why is no one asking the question? No, so many questions just don't get asked, do they? That's the job of the press to, free press to help with that. Yeah, but uh, they, they, it's, it's the, the free press it just went along with the MI5 and government story and just regurgitated it, which of course they always do, we, we know that. Yeah. So this is a case, uh, it's an absolutely centrally important legal case in this country. It's not just something that happened two years ago, it's something that is ongoing and we must never ever let it go. Okay, so that, um, that finishes uh, the main part of this, uh, this program. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you, if you like what we're doing, then don't forget to uh, look at the, the link below and uh, send us a donation. And um, there will be more Chronicles of the Times coming along very soon. And there will be more what the alternative papers say. And we're just gonna finish up um, with uh, uh, a question for the two people here. And uh, what we're going to do here is we've talked about the news, we've talked about this, we've talked about that. But um, Chronicle of the Times has issued to, um, to myself and to, to our guest, Sam Hill, um, a special Chronicle of the Times crystal ball, uh, which I bought from a very, uh, from a, a very good wizard musician, seems an absolutely um, reliable man of total integrity. So I'm sure these are the, the good, uh, these are the right stuff. And so Sam, could you tell us what your crystal ball has told you? I'm going to do something very sort of um, pragmatic and talk about the economic situation, which is heating up now. And I, and I predict uh, from what I've read, uh, what Macron has said, what's been coming from the UN, that they'll attempt to make a lot more of a, of a sort of a shared future, a shared economic future with Africa. Because with what's happening with China gaining so much um, 
strength economically. America is now very unhappy, but Europe has always had its eye, in, in my belief, with, with um, sharing a fortune with, with Africa more and more. So to, to, to use, use the resources, the people and everything, we'll see a lot of changes. And, um, you know, we have to make sure that our, our human rights, um, as the world becomes more globalized, don't become more equal, just uh, as, as to be used by um, the, the um, elite to make us more of a herd. We have to remember, you know, that we have our, our um, intrinsic identity, our sense of self, and we're not a conglomerate as they would like us to be. And I see that eventually, you know, if they do play people in the world too much and, and, and abuse our, you know, use us as resources, that there will be some kind of almost biblical payback towards the elite mm. if and when the opportunity arises. Well, that would be uh, good to see. But in your account, did you see Africa benefiting from this move? Or? Uh, it it is being used as a resource. I, I think that they will be probably some leveling of, of, of economic standards, but I, I see it more of a, as, a, as a resource that they're all going to be setting their sights on. A resource of so getting uh, materials and, and food. Macron was talking about a shared destiny with, with Africa. A lot of people were. Yeah. Well, I wonder what he means by that. Exactly. Can I guess? It, it, could be me, it could mean just uh, extracting their wealth and I, uh, no, well, we'll have on, to watch the spec uh, that was on uh, past performance that's probably what it would mean um well i will give my uh, crystal ball which is um, a bit more uh, short term than sam's and that is that um i think that um our prime minister boris johnson is going to find himself really in in the, in a difficult situation because this at the moment, everything's swinging along. We've got the statistics about COVID. We've got the stories about how people are, are, are dying in hospitals, whether they are, whether, whatever they're dying. A lot of them are dying from not COVID-related um, problems, but from the effect of the lockdown as well as suicides. And, and I, I hate to think what some of the homes are like. I mean, we do have quite a lot of dysfunctional families in Britain, um, which is not surprising continue, considering the way that these poor people have to function as regards jobs and benefits. You know, they're not treated hum hum humanly to start with. Um, but now to lock them all together in their own houses, I should think that some of the um, situations must be absolutely appalling. And of course, no, no one's taking any interest in it. The press aren't taking any interest in it. It's, uh, it's just being ignored. And so we've got all this, all these terrible pent up problems, I think, locked up. Now, what I want to come to is I think that um, that's where we are now. But there will come a period when things start to open up and people really start to ask questions. This, um, the information that Boris used to launch the lockdown. I think this is his WMD, like Blair's WMD. It's just a big lie that he's used to enforce force a policy through. And there will come a time when he's going to have to meet that. There must be a time when somebody is going to stand up for him. The Labour Party, that would be pathetic at the moment. But somehow, somewhere, he's going to have to face uh, some questions. And I don't think he's going to be able to answer a lot of questions. So I think he's got a lot of problems coming in, in the future. So um, uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up there. And um, I'd like to say thank you very much to Sam Hill for your contribution, which we enjoyed very much. And uh, don't forget to watch out for future broadcast. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. Hi. We okay? Yeah, um, bit of bad news. Oh. I forgot to set the recording at the beginning. Okay. Now that means my first, my first uh, presentation is lost. Now I'll do that again. Yes. And yours on uh, David Icke uh, lost half of it.
Okay. Sorry about that. That's all right. What should we do about that? Well, I, I'll redo mine again. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I can do it on my own. You know, you don't need to be there. And, mm -hmm. um, Where did it cut in the Ike? Because you might be able to salvage a bit. Well, I will. I, when I stop this recording, it will just be um, the uh, recording will be, uh, you know, what, what's the word? Save. Okay. Yes, yes. So you will just see exactly where okay. where it starts. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually just before you started reading the passage. Oh, I see. Okay. So I'm oh, sorry about that. That's all right. Sorry. Right. It's just a. Uh, it happens. Technical issues. Well, I'm afraid so, it's particularly at the start. Um, yeah. So, uh, well, uh, you're very good, Sam. I thought I thought it worked very well, and uh, I'll put it all, you know, put it all together and edit it. When I say I edit it, as I explain, I'm not going to edit the sound, so it will no. keep live. If some of the things, okay. um, but just the, the pictures. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, are you interested in doing another another one? Well, yeah, sure, sure, definitely. Very happy, oh. yeah. Because um, once I've done this one, I've done the video, which shouldn't take me that long. Um, I will do another newspaper, mm -hmm. and um, we can do a, a a repeat. You know, but it, it, it'll be a lot easier the next time. I know. It's I know. always always the first time. Um, Definitely. I mean, without we should get over the technical problems. We don't have a problem with the two of us. We don't have a problem with the length no. of the broadcast. We do have a problem with this three. Yeah. Uh, I had written, but so we, maybe we just leave it at two for now, because okay. um, and maybe uh, well, uh, see how long it was. I mean, it, when you talk about uh, an article, it does take quite a long time. You know, you can't skimpy it's not really yeah. quite like what the papers say which is very yeah. skimpy and superficial but we actually go into a bit more depth so it does take longer but uh, we'll see i think it'll be about you know 40 minutes okay um so what we'll do is i'll i will get it up on youtube all right and then we'll we'll see what sort of interest we get all right then okay thanks then it's all done Okay, thanks a lot, Sam. Thanks for all your patience. Bye, cheers.